the uh, the noise. Okay. And um, it 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 what uh, it cancels out my voice, and it's not a good thing. Alrighty. Okay, so I I can see myself, but I can't see you. I can see you. I can see you, and I can see me. Okay, look, do me a favor. Hit the uh the video button, and then ah mm -hmm. oh, there you go. I knocked see. There we go. All right. There we go. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. What up, ladies and gentlemen? What's up? Y'all yeah, already know what time it is. This is your boy, Trayvon Copeland. Why am I having my hair like this? I'm having a bad hair day and I can't find anything to wrap my hair, my business. But anyway, listen, we have a great guest for you today. Okay, from the bottom of my heart. It's not been about like three years in the making trying to get this man on and get an interview. And so we we are here. We we are here. We up and we're ready to rock and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, we have none other than Mr. Ace Blade himself. Mr. Ace Blade himself. Danny, what's up, man? How you doing? What's happening, Trey? Look, hey, first of all, it ain't been three years. We, we, I mean, we've been missing each other, you know, a couple months. So I don't know if it's been no three years. It's been three years yeah. for real. Yeah. Dang, bro, man. Yeah, we should have been done this, man. Definitely yes, Mr. Been. I appreciate you having me on, man. I appreciate you uh, taking the time um, to talk with me, man. Yeah, Mr. Quick. This is Mr. <laughs> Quick, everyone. This is what I call him Ace Blade. Dude, dude, let's, let, let's talk about Ace Blade. Um, he has two katana, katana swords. Why? Two katana swords because one just ain't enough, man. Like, psh, like, come on now. Two looks, two looks so cool. Is is what it is. Like, uh, <laughs> I tell people all the time, um, it's crazy because he ain't even got to use them in the comics yet. Like, <laughs> we we up we up to issue six, and he ain't really, you know, had the chance. You know, Ace Blade is more of a non lethal superhero anyway, so he don't really be trying to hurt people, but. Um, he really only used the two swords in the fourth book, but he really ain't even use them then, you know. So uh, uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get Ace Blade with the dual katanas, you know, some some real action soon. Okay, I had to kill him, but don't push me. Oh, <laughs> and it's two pot. It's in a pot. Yes, yes, yes. Ain't yes, no yes. killer, but don't push me. That's exactly. I had to kill him, but don't push me. That's exactly oh. Ace Blade's mentality. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you you having a a a, a, a fathomable like uh uh interest in purple why why why, why is that I, that's away from the the comic I, I just like what's what's up with the purple i like purple purple's cool no nah, man you gotta stay on like i got so much purple stuff in my closet now just because of ace blade like you gotta stay on brand with it you know like i it's crazy because now at work um my full-time job um when people see purple they be like oh that's that ace blade purple right yep. <laughs> Yep. Call me out, you know, anytime I'm wearing a a, a purple button up or, or a tie or something like that. They'll be like, oh, they got that ace blade purple on. So, you yep. know, I I bought so much purple over the years, like with the beanies, the hats and stuff, just to to make videos and try to keep it in people's mind. Yo, it ain't a lot of purple superheroes out here. So, yeah. you know, I'm kind of trying to keep that color. Um, so even when I'm not talking about ace blade, you see the purple and you think about ace blade. If you're a '90s kid, then you think of Ivan Ooze. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ivan. <laughs> and more cool. uh, Ooze, bro. Ivan Ooze. Ivan Ooze. <laughs> bro, that's wild. <laughs> he, had the, he had the little jail and stuff. He had the people wearing. <laughs> Power Rangers, yeah. <laughs> Ivan Ooze. Ivan Ooze. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, back back to Ace Blade though. Um, um, how how come you have him dressed up like a a ninja? Like you know, are you uh, is this is this like GI Joe inspired? Is this, is this like uh some type of uh Japanese lore or something? Like what's 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 up with the ninja? Uh, well, not not the no, excuse me, not Japanese Chinese because they ninjas in China. So. Yeah, Chinese. Yeah, Chinese. Um, yeah. So um, part of the Ace Blade story is um his mom, you know, worked in China. And, um, you know, he, he kind of did his growing up and his earliest fighting was in China. So um, I think, man, whether it's Chinese or Japanese or, you know, a lot of the Asian cultures, <laughs> a lot of the Asian cultures have huge impact, you know, with each other. You know, like Naruto, like I know a lot of black kids that love uh, Dragon Ball Z, you know, um, anime and, and things like that. 
And I think, you know, our cultures and, and the Asian cultures, you know, really, really mess with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I think it's cool to have a black dude, you know, in a ninja ninja suit, um, all purple. And, um, you know, I just thought it was kind of cool. So I was like, yeah, man, let's 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 lean into that. OK, OK. Um, now, because it, there, there are a few uh, ground level black heroes nowadays, you know, I die. like that's 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 what my like one of my goals is for doing these damn interviews is to try to create like a network mm-hmm. that we can have. You know, you know, image has one, and it's like everybody's individuals. But I'm like, yeah, that's that's fine. We can all be individuals, but you know, I I I do think it'd be cool to have a network where yeah. you could just jump on and tap into all these different type of black comics. And so, um, if we did have something like that, it'd be easier just to you know advertise that one particular site instead of all these individual um, sites. Because uh, I, I think that that um. That'd be a good look for everybody because, um, you know, you can just go on there and find, you know, like that peep, peep game, you know, is kind of like the um, prototype, like the idea. But yeah. um, I feel like that site could be better, you know, like uh, uh, I think the updated, you know, they continue like updating and trying to, you know, uh, presentation is, uh, is is everything. But, yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And um, like I think everybody's got a different way of doing it. I know even on our site. Like we um, got a page on our website that's just dedicated to black comics. So, you know, and just like, you know, with Peep Game and anybody else, it's hard to keep it updated. You know, we we put stuff on there. Like I got a post on Facebook that says, hey, if you got a black comic, drop it, drop an image and a link to where people can buy it. And that's that's pretty much all we do on our site. You know, you can't buy them right on our site, but I can at least get you to where you can buy it. Whereas Peep Game, you know. You can buy comics right there from their website. So, you know, I think that that's dope. I always think that that's dope to have, you know, a place where you can just buy black comics and not yeah. have to go to a hundred different sites. So, um, but yeah. I think everybody's everybody's trying to support everybody, and that's and that's what's important. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the site that he's talking about is called Fourth Wall Production. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's Fourth Wall Production. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, Fourth Wall Production. Yes, that's right. That's well done. Yes, uh, fourth wall production uh, is where you can go, but, or um, fourth fourth wall uh, pros, fourth wall pros dot com is where you can find pros dot com is what is what what he's referring to, but yeah, man, nah, um, back back at this Ace Blade thing, but like now, like I was saying, um, you have the urban legend out there. You might not know who that is. Uh, that's a good friend of mine. He's from he's Etrian, but he uh he he lives in uh Norway. He he has a, a comic where his character is kind of like a um teacher by day, crime fighter by night, but he don't have superpowers or anything like that. And, um, you know, like, uh, it's, a, it's a dude, I think his name's a watchman or something like that from yeah, concrete. Yeah. concrete. Yeah. Concrete. Yeah. He, he, he's like a ground level hero. He don't, he don't have powers. And so, uh, yeah, they're, they're out there. Um, uh, like, are we, are we going to get some kind of like last dragon glow type of powers uh, from, from Ace Blade or, or was it strictly, right. um, it's strictly going to be human. Like he, he's a human. I wish I had the book right here, but um, The Last Dragon is is my all time one of my all time favorite films. All right, so if you see the cover of Ace Blade Number One, you can see the the Bruce Leroy pro pose because um, he's trying to reach that upper level. He's all about you know showing that he's the showing that he's the best fighter in the world, and um, you know it's more about self control and 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 the positive output of himself. So um, we might if you read. I'll tell you this: If you read Blade number five, villain season, um, you might see you might see some hints of that. You might see some hints of that. Oh, I, I see it. I'm, I'm I'm on the site right now. I see which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the MMA uh, gloves on. He's like, yeah. like this or like yep. like this. Okay, Absolutely. okay. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is it, is it choppy? No, I can hear you good. Okay, cool. I don't know my my speakers uh, was sound like they uh, malfunctioned a little bit. Y'all listen. Uh, if y'all go on fourthwallpros.com, they got some awesome merch. Like I'm feeling the Chuck Taylors, I'm feeling mm-hmm. the shirts, man. They got all kind of Ace Blade stuff, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all go on that site and, uh, and shout them out. Um, okay. yeah, all right, so yeah, back to it. Um, what are, what are some of Ace Blade's villains like? You know, I, I I have some stories that I'm ready to release and you know 
my ordeal is always, you know, aiming at the government or aiming at the system. Uh, what 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 inspires you? Like, what what are, what are some of Ace Blade's villains, or what are some topics that uh, you feel like aren't being talked about and should be talked about? And so, you know, you, you kind of putting those in, in that in your story to um, kind of bring light, to bring more light to that to set issue. Yeah. yeah, I think um one thing one one thing that's important for us is to, like you said, to have a certain theme for your characters, right? So Ace Blade's theme is all centered around um, money, right? So Ace Blade's theme is people over money, not money over people. And um, and I don't know if you want to call it capitalism or greed or, you know, just the system that profits off of um, black bodies, you know? Um, yeah. There's a, there's a, a conscious and unconscious effort to um, treat people as products and not as humans, you know, Yeah. and Ace Blade kind of fights against that. So all of his enemies, um, his main guy, his main en enemy, Gutshot, you know, he literally, he owns businesses and whatever he can do to make money, he going to do it. It don't matter if he got to kill, steal, um, rape, pillage or plunge, he going to do it if he can make some money. Um, and um, like hammer hands, like his whole thing is he was a, he was kind of the 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 Mike Tyson archetype way back in the day. Like he, you know, had all of this money coming in, all this fame and glory. But um, you know, he lost he lost a couple of fights and he, you know, wasn't a hot stuff no more. So the money stopped coming in. So we started doing risky stuff to get back in that limelight, you know? And um, you know, it's just kind of a story about how not to let money influence you to do things that you normally wouldn't. Money is not necessary money is not bad. It's money it's when you love money more than you love the people, you know, around you. Or that, yourself. Yeah, or more than yourself. Or true, more than yourself. Then you um, then you start to do bad things. So that's kind of the main theme of Ace Blade. And then and then you know everybody's got superpowers and everything like that. But that's kind of the main theme of it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um. Let me see. You said, uh, who, who, who are some of his other villains? Uh, like, because I, I know you, uh, you said a few. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. well, his main one. So I, I, I Ace Blade is kind of like a, a, an homage to like old school comics, like Batman and and Spider Man and stuff like that. So I kind of say like most of his villains, like you can kind of see the similarities with other ones. So we got. I already talked about Gutshot and Hammer Hands, right? Um, mm -hmm. Gutshot is kind of like a kingpin. Hammer Hands is going to be kind of like your Bane, right? Um, mm. Then we got Blackjack, who is, you know, he's he kind of got a thing for Blackjack, but she's on the wrong side. You know, she out here robbing and stealing from people. And she's Catwoman. Kinda, she kind of like Catwoman. Then you got uh, Roulette, who's got these ice powers, but she's a gifted scientist. She's a gifted scientist um, who has a family member who's always getting in trouble with money. So she's not even you know, doing it for herself. She's doing it for her family. She's more like a poison ivy type. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she cares She cares more about somebody else than herself or in poison ivy's case, it's the plants. You know, she cares about the plants. So she out here um, causing harm to other What's people. What's Sandman? You say Sandman. Oh, Sam, yep, Sandman. That's a good one. That's a good one too. Sandman doing it for his kid. Absolutely. And then uh, we just created, uh, for the escape room, we created a villain called Eureka. And her, her thing is all about riddles, and um, solving crimes and then um, kind of shining a light on the hypocrisy of Ace Blade. So she she has an issue with Ace Blade hurting people who are already hurting. Right. He's out here helping the police lock people up. But police, the police are out here using those people as, you know, free labor. They are here using them as free labor in the prison system. And, um, you know, she sees hip hypocrisy in that. So she, you know, kind of challenges him on that. Um, so, you know, all, all of the villains kind of have like personal things, but you can also see kind of how they are. They relate to old school villains, you know, from different right. from different comic books. Now I got a question. Why the name Ace Blade? Ace Blade, man, I actually didn't come up with the name Ace Blade. Um, me and a friend of mine, we were back before this is in 2008, 2009. Um, we were just working. We were working a job, you know, as machine operators. And we were just going back and forth talking about comics we love. And he was like, hey, man, I had, I created this character called Ace Blade back in the day. And I never did anything with him. And then, you know, I just went home and we started writing, going back and forth. And he was like, man, I don't, you know, I don't have the energy or the time to do anything. If you want to do something with him, you know, go ahead. So I ended up getting deployed to Iraq. And while I was in Iraq, 
you know, just kept writing stories and sending sending them back stories and stuff like that. <laughs> Legit. And um, and then you know, came back and I had all these stories, and then we was just like, hey, let's make it in, let's make it into a comic book. So um that's really how it happened, man. It, it's really just inspiration from an old character that he created, and then um, you know, I kind of retooled and and reimagined to um repolished it. Yeah, so um, but I like the name Ace Blade. I thought it was kind of cool. I was like, yo, I like Ace Blade, man. That's kind of that's kind of fresh. And um, you know, the one thing that he had was that purple. Um, so I kept the purple, I kept the name, but everything else, you know, is is kind of new from from his original design. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, um, you know, Batman's kind of like that. Um Bob Kane's idea for Batman was like a plagiarized version of uh Zorro. Yep. <laughs> um, but uh I, I forget the uh the man's name off the top of my head who who's uh who's like everything that we like about Batman from like the grappling hooks and the, mm-hmm. the, you know, fighting and you know the, the, came uh, from the, um Bill the, no, what's his name? Bill? I mean, what's that dude's name? I can't remember you. I know you're talking about Some, somebody. I'm pretty sure somebody watching this going to be they screaming and they're going to be screaming the name at the TV like it was this person, this person. So whoever, you know, if you watch this interview, just uh, just message me. <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah I, think we'll, we'll, Bill we'll, Finger, I think it was. It might be Bill Finger, but I, I could be wrong with that. We'll see. Yeah. But the sad part about it is he don't get any credit. Yeah. He, he don't get any credit for um, his contributions towards Batman, which is messed up. I'm like, bro. Have the stuff that like a lot of people like about him, that comes from another person that, that don't come from the original uh, creator, and yeah. so um, yeah, that, that's just kind of interesting that you said that because you know that's always important to um, you know like protect yourself when it comes to like credits and things like that. Like, yeah. did, you, did you know um, Sylvester Stallone on 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 Rocky? Yeah, I saw that. Um, I saw an interview not too long ago. He was talking about he, um, you know, when they were talking about why he's not going to be in the next Creed movie, and they were saying, you know, um, <laughs> that they couldn't, you know, find a way to fit him into movie. Like his role was going to be real small, so he was like, "Hey, I ain't going to do it." And they were like, "Well, we'll just take Rocky out," you know. Um, I mean, well, they kind of did that in the second Creed movie. Anyway, I, I, I want to take over Ace Blade real quick, but yeah, they no, yeah. did that in the second movie, like they wrote him out the movie. Yeah, right. they 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 literally, you know, they gave him a nice ending point. It was like, yo, I'm going to go chill with my son, you know, and it made sense in the story, you know, that, you know, he regretted not spending more time with his son and he was kind of using Creed as a proxy to that. But, um, you know, in the end, hey, I'm going to go spend some time with my son. Now it makes sense that he's not in Creed 3. But um, right. you know, like, was, that's my fa- that's my wife's favorite movie series is Creed. So, I mean, it's Rocky. So, um, you know. It's always good to see Sylvester Sloan, but like you said, if you can't, you know, if you can't figure out the rights and all, yeah. <laughs> you can't figure yeah. out. Uh, yeah. You got the hoodie on and everything. Go on and go on and run about three miles. Go on and run them stairs, bro. Uh, I got st- I got stairs outside too. <laughs> bro, yeah. Yeah. Wilder, bro. But it, the movies are, are all you know inspirational thing, man. It's like. You know, no matter how much you get beat down, you know, try to get back up and and you know fight back, man. And that's that's the story. That's that's the that's the lesson you learn from that. Nah, you know, like, I, I, you know, like I, I, no, no, the Italians, the Italians, y'all got me fucked up. They got you know, y'all got me cussing. How he get a statue, bro? Joe Frazier is from Philadelphia. How the fuck does Rocky get a statue before Joe Frazier? Joe Frazier beat Muhammad Ali. Okay. <laughs> Joe Frazier beat Muhammad Ali. Bruh, okay. it's all, bruh, I'm telling you, it's all marketing, man. It's like, bro, people people saw that iconic scene of him running up them stairs. They saw that people was coming there. Yo, I went to we went to the uh to the airport out the airport out there, and they got it in the airport. And I'm like, bro, this is not even a real character. That's not a real yeah. person. <laughs> I mean, and see, it's a couple it's a couple uh boxers that said he took that 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 uh that that montage whatever like that idea of running through the city. Uh-huh. Um, uh, from real boxers, you know, Joe Frazier, and you know, a couple other boxers that uh that, that called him out for it. Um, and, and just and just real quick, I'm gonna just say this one thing real quick. Um, uh, I hate to say it, but I feel like it's kind of poetic justice because people wanted a Creed movie back then, yeah, and uh, they he didn't want to do it, so I'm like, yeah. well, now they got now they got the Creed movie, Rocky, I got the Creed movie, and they talking about doing Drago movies now. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Um, but yeah, the the Drago. Nah, I I'm down with that though. Like, cause I like in the second movie how they kind of focused on, you know, the the disgrace of the family and the mom was like, ah, y'all ain't, you know, the mom left and they were they were in shambles because mom left. I was like, <laughs> I was like, dang, bro, your boy is emotional because he ain't got his mom in his life. <laughs> But you know, I you know I might check it out. I'll, I'll watch a good a good boxing movie anytime though. Right, because like there's not too many boxing movies like that nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah they um, don't speak, do it a lot. Speaking of, I, I asked my friend um, Yosef Yahadi, son, Urban Legend. I, I asked him this: if you could get Ace Blade a video game or get him incorporated into a video game, like a fighter, yeah. you know, like what, like what, like what, what kind of video game would you want him in? Like a Tekken Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. You know, like uh, you still got a uh, dead or alive out there. It's a few, it's a few fighting games out there. I'm actually so if it, if I was gonna get him in a fighting game, I put him in something like Street Fighter. Um, but more more than likely, the first Ace Blade game is gonna be like an adventure game. It'll be more like Legend of Zelda. Like um, you remember um, Legend of Zelda, the twin two cities. Wow, what is it called? The uh, the one for Super Nintendo. Where he was on the, the the light side, and then they went to the dark side, and they had to do the whole game. Of, like I can't even remember the name of it, but um, but it's it's the first Ace Blade game will probably be something more like that, because um, the stuff that I got in mind is more of an adventure based thing. But definitely would love to see him in like a Street Fighter type game or um, um, what is it called? Double Dragons. Uh, like all of a Double Dragon. You know, yeah, you're dragons, about now. yeah, going through the streets, you know, cleaning up the city. Um, streets rage. Okay, so streets rage type. Streets yeah, rage street type. Rage. Ninja Turtles type. Like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah I feel that. Okay. Fresh. For sure. Okay. Oh uh, damn, what was I about to say? Man, lose my trade of thought. Um, <laughs> Got him thinking about video games. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Just nerding out, man. We finna nerd out. That's right. Um. Yeah. Okay. No, I I think I was about to say something about Zelda. When I was a little kid, I didn't know that the character I was playing with name was Link. Link, I, thought, yeah. I thought his name was Zelda. <laughs> it's I, a mess, man, because it's because I think a lot of us knew. Like I don't, I don't think I knew that until a few years ago when they were because it was this whole whole thing with like, oh, they should they should catch Zelda as such a no. When uh when I found out was with Smash Brothers when they put um Zelda in Smash Brothers, I was like, oh, Link and Zelda, Zelda and Link. This is Link. That's Zelda. But you know, right. Hey, I know no, 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 that's not my man. That's my man. No, no, yeah. no, 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 that's my, my no, no, you, you're not my man. You're my man. That's not my man. I want to uh, play with Zelda. No, I want to play with Link. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know something funny. Um, I had met Jeff Hardy, and that was like, you know, but like now they look different now because Jeff like the way his hair with the extensions and you know he like to color it and all that stuff. He, you know, like uh, but that was before when like Matt when they were around the same weight. And yeah. like they they wear their hair the same color, like and they stand next to each other. You can't tell who's who. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, Brothers. I met I I met Jeff thinking he was Matt. So I talked to him like uh -huh. as if he was Matt Hardy. He talked to me the whole time. He talked to me the whole time like he was Matt Hardy. <laughs> it was like, man, you love me, man. I appreciate that, man, man. Dude, <laughs> man I mean, that, that really sits home with me, man. I really he gave me a hug and everything, man. But I fucking I, I like Jeff Hardy just just because of that. Just because of that, because my brother liked Jeff Hardy, so I'm like, no, fuck him. I, I want, I want Matt. I like Matt Hardy. That's brother, hilarious. Like, so just <laughs> he said he didn't want to let you down. He didn't want to let, let me down. I respect that. I respect that. You got to stay in character. <laughs> you he man. You better be he man the whole time I see you, bro. No, no, always. You gonna always be he man to me, <laughs> like, bro. That that shit was crazy. <laughs> he talked to me the whole time, the whole time. Like, yeah, I'm Matt Hardy. I'm Matt Hardy. <laughs> yeah, I, I told him stop doing the twist of fate like his brother. He said, "Hey, I know, I stop doing the twist." Of fate. <laughs> he said, "Okay, okay." I'm like make a, like make up a new move. Don't 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 do don't do what uh, don't do what Jeff do. You don't, you don't want to be Jeff. Are no. you Matt Hardy? <laughs> like, oh like, man, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's hilarious, bro. bro. Hey, okay, you gotta, right. you gotta do it though, man. That's that's good to do for the fans though. I, yeah. Know, All right, so they... let's talk about these. Uh, let's talk about these allies real quick here. Let's uh. We, we we got some stuff here. We got um we got Black Scorpion. Yep, yep. Uh, he kind of looked like uh why he look like uh Snake Eyes. He kind of like what what yep. not not with the uh uh the mask he got on, but he kind of reminded me of Snake Eyes with like the body right. on. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to bring Black Scorpion back, man. We had a, a partner who um who was working with us for a while, and you know he dropped off the map. So, but um we want to bring Black Scorpion back because he had a, a unique type of thing. Um, he he was kind of like our Iron Man character who who had some some issues like with addiction and drinking and stuff like that, but was still trying mm-hmm. to be a, still trying to be a, a hero and, and help out in the city. And um, you know, that, that kind of thing, that kind of story is still needed. So um, Yeah. But then we got uh Lumberjacks in there too. The Lumberjack. Lumberjack is the King Supreme. And King Supreme, yeah. Lumberjacks is kind of the uh he's kind of our our I say he got anger issues, but Morgan will say that he's just he just dedicated, you know, he's kind of our our uh justice by any means kind of character. So, you know, he catch you out there stealing, you know, he's gonna chop your arm off, chop your hand off. Um and uh, you can't, <laughs> he said, you won't be stealing no more. Uh, so he, he carries that large ax around and he definitely going to use it. And then you got King Supreme, who is our kind of like cosmic. He's our, you know, planetary um, fly out in the in the space and, and battle on other planets and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, yeah, we, we kind of got a, a wide range of, of of characters, but we got more characters coming too. We got uh, this character right here, Zajay, Queen Zajay coming. Based on my wife, we got Harlem, who's a young kid with incredible powers. Um, her powers are are incredible and, and legendary. And um, you know, we got we got a bunch of bunch of new stuff coming. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Uh, I want I want to talk about these villains real quick, bro, because this, uh, this this is probably gonna be my my favorite villain just just because just because yeah, I got a character name Preacher. <laughs> I, I I think I think I'm in love. I, I think. I am in love. Just going back off of what you said, yeah. off of everything being circulated around money in this mm-hmm. in this universe. Uh, we, I, I got another question I want to ask you too, but I hang on. But everything is circled around money. Y'all got a villain named Preacher. This this is the best villain ever. <laughs> and it's <laughs> terrible. Right because, it's terrible Why? because if you're in the black community and you ever been to church, you've been to multiple churches. If you see the preacher, you know exactly what we're talking about, bro. It's it's some out there that could care less about uh saving souls and, and helping people bro they trying to get they trying to get that paper they trying to get them they try to get them g4s and and jets and trying to get that guap nigga they trying, trying to get, get that guap nigga <laughs> they trying to get that tax free money you know and it's like it's really despicable bro so you know like like you said that that thing on the preacher bro that that's a villain that and and ace and honestly even though he's not ace play he's lumberjacks his villain Ace Blade probably hates him more than any other villain in the in the whole universe. Like if Ace Blade could get, if Ace Blade could get his hands on the preacher, he might he might kill cross that, that nigga. Line. I kill that nigga. He might cross I that line. Like you said, he ain't no killer, but they ain't gonna don't push me, bro. Cause kill that nigga. I kill that you. Nigga. I kill you. <laughs> preacher, bro. I can't. I kill you, bro. But yeah, um, I think. I think the preacher, like especially for black folks, man, um, they automatically know what it is. They automatically know what that that character is, and that's why people give them a go too. I kind of great <laughs> people are uh, attracted to them because they know what that story is about, bro. You should get that nigga a perm and a gold tooth and, and, a, and a gold <laughs> chain, bro. <laughs> oh man, <sighs> he balling, bro. But um, you know. People, people just seem seem to relate to them, and um, I'm glad they do. I'm glad they understand. Right, I, I just got to say this real quick. Another, another side story. I'm so sorry, bro. Right. We were in this church one time, bro, for a funeral, and the preacher came on stage. Mm. Three gold chains, not one, but three gold chains, I and he had a cross. Ain't that a be? Like, <laughs> like, bro, he had three gold chains on, no cross. Like I know people coming to church with with crosses around their neck. No, the nigga had three gold chains. Like he, he had like um he had a watch like you remember the spinners remember them John Cena spinners oh, no. like they had a John Cena spinner I'm like what the fuck what is this John Cena on the watch bro no what is this nigga bro like bro like she got me saying it word now <laughs> my apologies for people at home bro he had bro just had a perm gold tooth I'm like bro 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 what's going on what's going on looking like a pimp looking like Bro, what is this? This not church. <laughs> this is this not church, bro. You, you living, you live, you living good. <laughs> Walk around with a gold chain on, bro. I, I, three, three of them, not one, but three. Mm. Take that, take that, bad boy. Take that, take that, take that, take that, take that, take that. Did he sign it? 
in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Heal your credit. <laughs> terrible. Terrible, bro. Now I, I like the preacher who be having the coat and be hitting people with <laughs> Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn be like, fall out. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. You should I'm, have him do that. You should have y'all should have him do that. <laughs> hey, a sneak peek though, we uh we're gonna have so I wanna say in Lumberjacks 3. Uh, they got him throwing offering plates at people. Like he gonna he use it, he gonna be using the offering plates as a weapon. <laughs> he's gonna be using the offering plates as a weapon, bro. Everybody bro. we hit, they get kicked out the church. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're trying to have fun. We're trying to have fun with it. Bro, I'm about to read Lumberjack, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read Lumberjack just for that villain, bro. Like you, you gotta send me us stuff. You got you gotta send me that. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Y'all gotta y'all gotta make him like the, the, the Thanos or something. Like <laughs> they, they gotta go, they gotta go save some people in the church. He got people who <laughs> all right, all right, let me stop. Let's stop picking them up. I'm just joking. He got, people. He got a little uh he got a little trick up his sleeve though. Like uh if you seen uh Dragon Ball, you know when Master Roshi came out of that shell and he was all swole. Hey, don't don't let the preacher fool you. He, oh, it ain't sweet. Oh, it ain't sweet, Ryan. He got hands. Oh, bro. Preacher okay. got hands. <laughs> oh man. Oh Lord. He said, "Don't think I won't put this cross down and beat that tail, bro." He, hey. Sister Lily, would you hold my Bible? <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. He, yeah. He 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 liked that. He liked that. Okay. Ah oh, man. Sister Sister Lily, would you hold my Bible? I gotta show Brother Dinkin, Pastor. These hands. <laughs> I gotta lay hands on the congregation. <laughs> gotta lay hands on the congregation, bro. Yo, I uh, so um, I guess because of the name, did that inspire you to kind of uh, start you know giving people like card names? You, know, you said something about like like uh, like, like a, few, a, few, a few names you said a few names you said it kind of goes under like either card names. Yeah. Like uh, or like card games and stuff like that, or like this kind of cards, like stuff. Yeah. Um. So so he's in. So Ace Blade operates in our fictional version of Las Vegas, right? So it's called Vegas City in the comics. And um, you know, every, a lot of the characters are based off of like card games. Like I said, we got blackjack, we got roulette. Um. And um, you know, we got a we got a bunch of them. We got even more. Like uh, we got Tunk coming. Um. You know, we got plenty of plenty of characters kind of based on card games, but that kind of goes with that tradition of comic books. Like you you have a certain theme and you kind of lean into it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, um, you know, I think it, it helps people remember them. It helps people like if you, you know, when you hear Blackjack Cuff enough times, um, you'll remember. Like you see her show up in the comics, you'll remember, OK, Blackjack is something that you've heard before and it's something that you can um, relate that character to. So, um, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, She's kind of elusive, like a blackjack, you know. Like she's she's the one who can she can disappear at a moment's notice. You know when you when you say hit me and then that uh that ten come out and it's like oh shoot I done bust you know whatever. So um <laughs> uh -huh. yeah so um so, you know, we try to use something familiar to people is all. Okay okay um Francis let me see how you say this man's name. De Maurier. De Maurier. De Maurier yeah Francis De Maurier. De Maurier. He's um so that's one of uh, Lumberjack's villains. His whole thing is he's kind of like Gutshot, but he is kind of the the um the the avatar for like the medical community, like like um like he's profiting off of people's um, being, sick. being sick, right? So he owns you know all these pharmaceutical companies. He's got all of these drugs in production that can help and hurt the community. He He's using like the black community in in New Orleans to um to kind of experiment mm. on and stuff like that, and um it's you know it just shows like we seen we just saw I don't remember what the university was but they were talking about this big healthcare university they just apologized for using you know black the prisoners um the prisoners to experiment on um as far as healthcare and I'm like bro like we there's the book that's not okay that's not an apology that's a Exactly. Everybody in there get five years off their sentence, or, you know, or Bro, something. Rated, like something. And then we got books so like Medical like, Apartheid. Oh, we're sorry. Exactly. Um, then we got books like Medical Apartheid that talks about how, 
They used to treat women like the whole the whole field of gynecology was born off of how they mistreated um, black, black women in, in slavery. And um, it's it's really ridiculous how the history of America has literally stolen from from black lives, man. It's, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right there with you, brother. I'm right, I'm right there with you, brother. Yeah. Y'all got some good villains, man. Y'all Appreciate y'all you, man. Villains. We're trying to we're trying to do some <laughs> we're trying to do some 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 real stuff at the same time some some entertaining stuff, man. Because, um, you know, when you got the good art and you got stuff that kind of attracts people, you know, then you can kind of give them the the meat that goes with it. But you got to have a good art and you got to have something to catch them with first. Right. I could have sworn y'all had a. I could have sworn I seen like a fan film or something uh uh being worked on or something for Ace Blade or something something like that like um we did a uh, we did like way back in the day we did a a little a little Ace Blade teaser called Neighborhood Watch but the one that we're we want to work on is going to be kind of a little more it's a, like a short film but it's more professional we just had in time like covid covid happened so we couldn't get out and get together to like cast and, and all that stuff so um, we kind of put it on the back burner for the podcast, so we just kept working on the podcast and, um, you know, putting that out instead. Mm-hmm. Hey, podcast matter. Podcast yeah. matter. All right. Um, damn, let me see. Uh, any more questions I have for Ace Blade? Oh, 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 oh. Um, uh, you want to tell us about the escape room real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, here in Burlington, where where you where you live at? I live in Los Angeles. I'm. I, I moved out here from Charlotte, though. From Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, you was in Charlotte. That's right. Yeah. Um, so down in Burlington, we got a, um, we just opened a store. You know, it's a comic book store. We sell black comics. We sell indie comics. We sell our books. But we just opened an escape room a couple of months ago um, based on our character. So if you've ever been to an escape room, it's like a little puzzle room. You go into it, they lock you in, and then you got to figure out the puzzles in order to get out. So um, what we did was we took our characters. And we put him in the escape room. So Ace Blade is in there. He's locked up. Um, you go in there and you find out that the villain Eureka has set a trap since you're since you are Ace Blade's biggest fans. Uh oh, can you still hear me? I can hear you. You good? You good? You good? You good? Um, so they so Eureka set a trap for you since you're you're one of Ace Blade's biggest fans, and you got to solve the puzzle. You got to um, disarm the bomb um, to get out of the room before the bomb explodes. So huh. um, you know it's just a way to kind of um entertain people it's kind of the reverse disney model you know how they 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 get you with the the toys and the and the movies and stuff they put the princess and the frog out there they put cinderella out there and then they get you to go to the park right then they say hey spend this six hundred dollars and take your your family to the park we kind of do it the opposite way hey come in and check out this escape room and then while you're here learn about these characters and take one of these comic books home with you right yeah genius people genius hurrah 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 we try to do we try to do it a little different, you know, but you know, it's it seems to be working right now, man. People are people are enjoying the escape room, and it's a it's definitely a, a a nice way to make some money um some money here in the in the store. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, um, uh, that girl in uh in Philly, they 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 closed down their um their comic shop, and yeah. I was like, yeah, man, because you had that connected to a restaurant, like that's that that was. It, it sounds good until it's not. Because they, like, I was like, yeah, COVID, they got hit bad during COVID. Like, see, so yeah, there was just a comic shop. They could have just went online. Like, yeah. they, 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 like, they in Philly, they got a bunch of celebrities, a bunch of people who shouted out that comic uh, store. And so, yeah, I could have, uh, I could only imagine uh, that they had just stayed. Because, like, that, that, that was actually like uh, in my interviews with a lot of uh, black owned comic stores. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I asked them like, "How did you survive during COVID?" And everybody was like, "Well, well, we, we were an online market before. Like, well, some yeah. some of them were online before they went, you know, to you know selling hard copies in the store, and um, yeah, they just went back to doing that, and just uh, they like the fans just really uh connected uh with them and just locked in, and so like that's yeah. that's how I was able to to, to survive. So uh, yeah, man, like it's just you got you got to find you know creative ways to you know to get people. In the store, or you got to you got to find creative ways to find funding for for your store. And so, uh, yeah, man, that's that's an awesome thing because you can always do that. You know, you can always uh, update it. You know, you get new characters. You know, like if you want to get a new costume or a new design in there. Like, yeah, that that's the way you do it. Oh, yeah. Do it. 
All right, so let's talk about this comic shop, and I, I think I think we're gonna wrap it up after that, um, right. because with your store, like I know, like you're not traditional comic store, but that's fine. You know, nowadays nobody really is. You know, they, everybody's selling like magic. Everybody leaning, like everybody leaning on like the nerd culture to like uh, nerd nerd and geek culture to to fund whatever they do. They selling, uh, they selling pops. They selling. Um, action figures and they sell an anime. You can yep. get the manga. You can get that manga in your in your store. You good to go. Yeah, you good. And like, like that have nothing to do with comics. That that has nothing to do with comics. Comic books is its own entity. And mm -hmm. like, that's its own lane. Its own lane. And so yeah, you like they like everybody, they getting every anything. Anything in there. Like e e even if you're selling like them toys and things like that, like them big laminated toys and all that stuff, like that, they ain't got nothing to do with comic books. Like yep. like yeah, but uh, um, yeah, man, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, um, so we, so uh, again, like you just said, like most of our, most of the stuff that we sell on our website, you know, we just stock here. So we keep like um all our books here. We got, you know, like we got Tuskegee Airs in here. We got um Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer. We got some stuff that people can buy here. Some stuff that people can check out. But then we got like back issues, like the the mainstream stuff that we got. Um, Marvel and DC is all like key issues. Like we got, um, um, you know, Spawn number three, Spawn three hundred in here to sell. You know, we got some higher price books that collectors would want. Um, but the you know, but when I get it, when I get you in the store, I'm trying to tell you about Ace Blade, King Supreme, Lumberjacks. Like that's the wow. whole goal is to kind of convert into that. But now. But the escape room, like we open one and we got space that um, like I'm thinking we're going to build another one, you know, probably in the next four or five months. Because um, every like almost everybody who who's done it has been like, hey, when do you, when's the next one going to open? So we're, we're planning on doing a villains escape. So you'd be locked in a prison cell with the villains. And then, um, you know, you got to you got to break out of the out of the uh, jail cell. So, um, you know, that's that's in the plans for the future. More money, more money, more money. <laughs> <laughs> that I should have been Diddy for Halloween, bro. Diddy, take that, take that, take that. Just ripping everybody off. Just giving, giving, giving these people the stupidest deals possible, and just seeing who go for it. And walk okay. around talking about I got money because you're ripping everybody off. That's Diddy ain't shit. All right, oh, we see here. Oh, okay, all right. Ace hey, Blade. We talked about uh, we talked, we talked about the uh, the escape room. Um. Okay, no, I just want to say this for everybody who are watching at home. Brother Quick here um, is the fourth, four, that makes four, black-owned comics um, in in the U.S. Oh, it's, no, no, not in the U.S. In, like, they're, they're, like, that makes Trump, North Carolina have four black-owned comics and uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the, uh, the U.S. So, uh, like, North Carolina is definitely the leader uh, in, in black-owned comics. We try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's you. It's uh um brother Stokes. Stokes, Jermaine, um Jermaine. and then um Fred Wright. Yeah. Yeah, and Fred Wright, yep. 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 That's all y'all. Cause I think Atlanta has like two or three, maybe. Maybe maybe three. I know there's one in Vet Austin, and I know there's one in Decatur, cool comics and uh um uh, comics and games or something like that, uh, brother Tony Tony K. But yeah, man, like uh, yeah, man, I, I just I just went on this uh black comic shop tour, just trying to um find all the different black owned comic shops. I know somebody made like a a black comic guide or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Black, uh, black comics encyclopedia. I got it around here somewhere too. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's like I said, I think everybody's trying to help however they can. But it would be nice to get everybody together and figure out, like, really, like, where can we we need blackcomics.com or something like, or everybody just yeah. jump on um, 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 Imani's site and um and and do it like that. But we just need everybody to get together and be like, hey, this is where to go if you want to find black comics. So yeah, like, bro, like I, I've been an avid um I've been an avid marketer for um black owned comics um and you know I, I normally would tell people you know just go on Pete Game. And most of the people that be on there, they have individual sites. Like if you want to go check out their merch and stuff like that. But yeah, I like I, you know, I peep game and you know I tell them like my top five. You know, mm -hmm. Ace Blade, Root, um, Harry Tommy, Demon Slayer, uh, Concrete mm -hmm. Comics. Um, I mean, there's a couple other stuff on there too. Um, 
It's some good books, man. It's a lot of good. A lot, a lot of, of books. Books, man. Uh, it's, it's a lot of books, man. Y'all gotta forgive me, man. It's it's ten o'clock. I've been up since six. Um, working on this documentary, man. Black comic renaissance, bro. Like I, I, I look forward to this this documentary, and I I think it's gonna be extremely informative, you know, for the youths, for the youth them, all, all the youth out there, bro. Educate educating people and. Bro, like these interviews gonna be taught in like in a, in a um these, these interviews gonna be taught like a lecture in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I certainly hope so, man. Hey, before I, before you let me go, man. So you out there in LA, um, what what you think about them Lakers? They're terrible. <laughs> they got three. They won. They won. They won last night. They beat the Pistons. Oh, that means nothing. <laughs> that means nothing. Listen. Unless they go on like a 30 game winning streak, which I doubt because Westbrook <laughs> can't shoot. I don't know why they got Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly can't shoot. He's yeah. disruptive, but he's not necessarily like, you know, somebody like if you have him on the floor, you actually, I, and I love Patrick Beverly, but if you have Patrick Beverly on the floor on offense, you're a man down. You only have four people on the floor. You have Patrick Beverly. Terrible. On the floor. Yeah, but on defense, he's great. He's, he's great on defense. He's, he's disruptive. Yeah. Um, You know, it's just that Draymond a little taller, so Draymond could be a little more effective and be able yeah. to guard like you know multiple people because yeah. uh, Draymond's annoying as hell. Even to his man, own teammate. If they can, so I like Russ coming. Russ been coming off the bench. I like that, but it's when he they win when he assists. When he has like eleven assists or more, like the, the three games they won, he had more than eleven assists or something like that. So um, I think you need to stick with that, like distributing on off the off the bench because your boy Austin Reeves like. That 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 dude that dude be balling, you know. He ain't no he ain't no uh he ain't Giannis, bus. but he yeah, you know. Um, but you know, I think they if like you said, they need to go on a 20 30 game run in, in order to make it and it's yeah, gonna be that top seed. It's gonna be tough, bro. So, so the Warriors I, coming back, the Warriors trying to back to back that they, they, they try they trying to they trying to double up, they try, they trying to double up, and it's gonna be hard to beat them. It don't look like it's gonna happen though, cause them jo- they lost what eight in a row on the road or something like that. This already like they need to. I mean, it's Curry though, bro. It's Curry. It's, he, he, it's Curry. Scored, like what? What can you do with what? What can you do to Curry? He scored you know fifty the other night and they still lost though. That's the, they they don't play no defense. That's the problem. But anyway, yeah. we we talk about we talk about uh basketball all day, <laughs> bro. We, we we talk about we, you just call you just call me. We talk about basketball, man. But nah, man. Um. Yeah, not like just 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 with with this with this tour I'm doing. Um, yeah, bro, I just I just want to uh, you know just give everybody their flowers and Appreciate highlight it. everybody. And, and I I got some news for you. Like I'm so glad the Black Panther is out right now. Uh, because I want to ridicule the hell out of that movie and Come also on, ridicule the hell out of Marvel. Uh, Come on now. You know I uh, I am I am I am I'm, I'm tired of white people making money off of us. <laughs> um, what what you will learn. If y'all watch my documentary, I go with depth in explaining how they they uh how how, how they uh exploited um um you know, the black community with uh making Black Panther because Black Panther came out in the '60s and you had characters that was out way before that you know even, even Luke Cage even Luke Cage is a a, a plagiarized character. I will so, say, <laughs> I will say. They seem there seems to be certain black characters that they push, and certain black characters they that that they don't. Um, I will say that, but um, I'm I'm definitely gonna check it out. So uh, whenever you put it out, send me the link. Yeah, I better believe that. Hey, y'all, listen, we all out of time, man. We had brother Danny Quick in the building, man. Danny Quick in the building, bro. Ace Blade, pop, 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 Hey, listen, bro. We are all out of time, bro. Y'all go shout out Ace Blade. Uh, tell them where they can follow you at, real quick, Danny. Um, if you want to find Ace Blade stuff, hit us up on our website, fourthwallpros.com. If you want to find me on social media, it's at the Ace Blade on all social media platforms. Yes, all social media platforms, Facebook, all that stuff. Yeah, we all out of time, bro. Respect my nerves, bro. Another one, another banger, bro. We are out, Danny. Peace. I'm holla at you. Peace. It's been real. All right, trying to end this freaking end. Okay.